Hey guys, welcome to Tomes. Today we talk about probably the quirkiest book in my collection, but also one that happens to be my favorite. So join me today as we talk Creature Tech here on Tenable Tuesday. So this is going to be a weird one, but I need you to hang in tight because what we're talking about today is a graphic novel that includes flying space eels, cats, demon hands, wait, did you say demon hand and mummified aliens? And there's an alien that's mummified? We are talking today about my favorite graphic novel, which is Creature Tech. It is probably my favorite graphic novel that he's written. Now, what makes it so great? Well, honestly, put it all together, it is a quirky, weird, wild ride. Uh, starts off about gold rush territory, somewhere in California. You have a guy who's made a pact with a demon, so he's got a demon hand, but it's not just any demon hand, it's a cat demon hand, so it allows him to control and turn cats into big demonic cats, it makes sense, kinda, sort of, not really, but it's pretty great. And uh, his goal is to summon a giant space eel. To be completely honest, I forget why he wants to summon the giant space eel, but that's his point. And uh, so that's where the book starts. Now, uh, I don't want to spoil it, I mean it happens on the first few pages, uh, but he completely fails. Well, okay, he succeeds in summoning the space eel, but let's just say he doesn't survive the encounter. Uh, flash forward a few hundred years, uh, hundred, and uh, you've got a guy, the main character, who uh, who's a former Christian turned atheist because he studied the science, and the science convinced him there was no God. His dad, a pastor, uh, still studies science, still loves science, and is determined to be a scientist, but obviously has not given up on his faith. And so the real crux of the book comes down to an argument basically between the son and his father, uh, and it really is where does science fall in. Now, the book does not just hash this out. Uh, again, that guy who summoned a demon hand and can control cats with it. Uh, he was, you know, crushed by a giant space eel. Uh, he comes back from the dead, and he's a ghost trying to find the Shroud of Turin uh, so that he can come back to life. Uh, spoiler alert, he does. Uh, he successfully comes back to life, sort of. Uh, and so now he's kind of a zombie guy who still has a demon hand, who's trying to re resurrect the space eel. A zombie with a demon hand that turns cats into demons? Resurrected by the Shroud of Two. Uh, so it is it is kind of fun, and so you've got that as the villain. The main character, like I said, is an atheist uh, who, whose dad is a Christian, who's struggling with all of that, and he is sent back to Turlock. Um, I'm almost positive. Uh, if you're doing the Doug Tenable bingo, most likely, if it's a location in California, it's going to be Turlock. Uh, but he's sent back to Turlock, and uh, he is put in charge of this place, called Creature Tech. And uh, Creature Tech is basically like the SCP Foundation before there was an SCP Foundation. And uh, if you don't know what the SCP Foundation is, tune in later. I'm definitely going to do a video on the SCP Foundation because I like the SCP Foundation, so stay with me. And uh, so the Creature Tech is basically a warehouse just full of weird, paranormal, extraterrestrial, other type creatures and beings and things. And uh, included in that is the Shroud of Turin. And uh, so the ghost of zombie guy from the beginning is trying to get the Shroud of Turin. And meanwhile, they are trying to catalog, the main character, all the artifacts in Creature Tech. And uh, so there's this battle going on back and forth. Uh, anyway, spoiler alert, like I said, ghost guy gets the Shroud of Turin, unleashes a few aliens, and proceeds to resurrect himself zombie style uh, with the Shroud of Turin. Now, the book gets weirder because in the process of that zombie guy releasing uh, the aliens and, and getting the Shroud of Turin, uh, the main character is mortally wounded by being stabbed through the chest. Uh, that's a bad thing most of the time. However, 
there happens to be this alien creature uh, that's symbiotic and can fuse with you and keep you alive. And so what the creature does is the creature actually fuses with his chest and makes kind of, uh, it really is like a precursor to Bigfoot Bill, if you have read that one. Uh, it, it's got this weird like exoskeleton thing that fuses over him. And now he's got like four extra arms. Well, the story gets cooler. I, I was going to say weirder, but it's it's cooler. The story continues because the creature that's now fused to his chest begins watching kung fu movies, and so it learns all sorts of kung fu action, uh, which is fun. And so you've got a guy, again, atheist, former Christian, struggling with faith and all that. Now he's run into the Shroud of Turin, which you know what that is. And the Shroud of Turin has actually proved to be the genuine article. And uh, so he's having to struggle with that idea. And then on top of that, he's now been fused with an alien life form. So he's having to go through all of that chaos. Okay, I think I can wrap my mind around that. Wait, so he's got a symbiote in his chest? That he got from an alien that was trying to kill him. Well, let's keep going forward. Because... That zombie guy is still trying to resurrect the giant space eel. I have said a lot of weird sentences in this this review so far, uh, but I, again, it's just a great book. I, I can't, I can't not say weird sentences like the zombie guy with the demon cat hand turns a, a giant warehouse full of meat into a giant sentient meat monster that proceeds to meditate on his own existence, and he walks out in the middle of the road and gets crushed. I mean. That is an awesome clip in the book. It is just absolutely fantastic. And if you don't appreciate that, I just don't think you appreciate fine art. And uh, so this book just keeps, it just keeps ramping it up. It has all of these wonderful quirks, uh, a lot of cool, again, discussions back and forth between spiritual and scientific. Uh, and again, it's all just wrapped in this sci-fi veneer. Um, the guy, like I said, he's got that weird exoskeleton thing. And as he's hunting down the zombie, he actually gets a giant, like, reptilian, not reptilian, a giant insectoid friend who joins up with him. And so, I mean, that's great. And then as part of the climax, remember at the zombie guy with the demon hand that can turn cats into big giant cat demons? Yeah, he starts turning all the cats into town into giant cat demons. I think Doug Tenable's got something about cats. Um, almost every book has something to do with cats, and they're oftentimes very evil. So um, make of that what you will. Uh, but one of the climaxes of the book is a giant army of cat demons that are like rampaging across the Turlock and uh, it's California, but they have shotguns. And uh, so you can imagine where that goes. And so it's a really, really fun romp. Uh, it's, it's pretty well drawn. It's got the kind of standard uh, Doug to Naples style. Um, and of course that's kind of your uh, classic clip of this book uh, is the guy kind of figuring out what's going on with the symbiote that's now fused to his chest. Um, and again, it's a fun book. It's a good romp. Um, it's got some Lovecrafty type elements. Uh, if you don't know what I mean by that, go watch my review of Alejandro Mirabal's Long Harbor. You'll see a little bit more on Lovecraft in that. And if you have no idea what I meant by SCP Foundation, stick in because very, very soon I'm going to be reviewing some of the books that I've got on the SCP Foundation. So uh, tune in uh, here on Tomes because I actually have SCP books and I can use them as an excuse to talk about the SCP Foundation. Guys, let me know. Have you read Creature Tech? What do you think about it? Uh, if you've read any of Tenable's other works, what's your favorite? And uh, join up in the comments. Guys, if I could ask you a favor, as you watch these videos, can you subscribe, like this video, comment below, and if you enjoyed it, share it. Share it on Twitter, Facebook, wherever you really want to. That's apparently how the algorithm works now, is these videos being shared. So if you can, that would be great. Otherwise, guys, go pick up a copy of Creature Tech. It is a great book, uh, well worth the read. It's a fun romp, and uh, again, I think you'll like it. Guys, thanks for joining me here on Tomes. I'll catch you next time on Tenable Tuesday.